All right, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the second and last February webinar of 2022. We're rolling into March here in a in about a week or so. There's three parts to tonight's webinar. So if you are watching this in the recording on YouTube, um, keep in mind that if you go to pixelprodisplays.com, you can always watch any of our webinars. But you're welcome to join us live in any of these. Uh, and we again, we have the schedule posted there. Um, so. Uh, what we're going to do starting uh, tonight, we have a three-part uh, webinar sequencing on multiple computers. And this is uh, using x lights across different platforms. Now, I'm not talking about the Mac platform. So I am doing this in Windows. So if you're running a Windows computer, by all means, consider uh, that if you're on Mac, that maybe I might not have the answers to the questions that you may have. So keep that in mind. So um, we're going to uh, look at... Um, uh, the common questions and why, yes, it might, it, to some people it's going to be easier, to other people it's going to be a little more challenging. But the common questions that we very often see in all of the groups are how do I transfer sequences from my home computer to my laptop computer? Uh, what files are associated with sequencing whenever I sequence on my laptop instead of my desktop? Um, and the last one uh, is how do I run my show on an old laptop from my garage? And why is that relevant? Well, um, many people like to sequence on, a, on their desktop and they don't want to run their show from their desktop computer, but they have an old laptop and they'll go run X schedule from it. So we're gonna show you how to do that tonight with these goals, these are the three goals for tonight. Review, review file associations uh, with x -Lite sequences. We'll talk about file sharing services that sync files across multiple platforms uh, or across multiple computers that is uh, we'll also talk about uh, transfer uh, uh, we'll also discuss the transfer of show files for playing on a remote computer with X schedule part one we're just going to keep it basic the the basics of X light sequence files and transfers so let's go ahead and get started with the basics of x lights files now i have created a, a much more in-depth understanding uh, of files inside x lights uh in in another video i'll try to link that video here or here up there uh whenever i get this on youtube so with that being said the first thing that we're going to do is when we talk about the file structures of XLIS, we're going to go look inside your show folder. So at some point, you have to have a show folder. And in, in this example, I have here an XLite show folder. Inside this basic uh, show folder of yours, you will have a sequence file. If you've created a, a sequence, it'll be called an XSQ file or also known as a program file. And it has the little nutcracker icon, which should, if you double click on this, it should open up X lights and open that sequence. Uh, you, have a, you have a backup file, XB, uh oh, I spelled uh, typo, XBKP. You have those backup files. X lights helps maintain your file structure. And if you have a file that goes uh, corrupt, you can always convert an XBKP file to uh, an XSQ file or to an XML file, which will restore uh, or give you a, a chance to go back to a previously used version if you happen to have a corrupted copy. Um, these are auto-generated too, by the way. Uh, also, uh, x we have we have a couple other files. The most important ones, I think, are the controller file and the layout file. This is your x underscore networks dot XML, which is here. And then you have your X lights underscore RGB effects file. Um, so your network is think of the think of the tabs in in X lights, and you have a controller tab, and you have a, a layout tab. the The network tab would be your controller tab, and the uh, RGB effects um, would be considered your layout. So that's where those come from. And then. Um, other related sequence files that you uh, may not be aware of, but you might that, that are necessary for you to to find and gather things such as videos, images, shaders, and music tracks. So you would want to keep these all in one folder, obviously. Uh, and whenever you have a sequence, it only contains data. It doesn't contain any files. For example, what I mean by sequences contain data, not files, your, 
where I have this file here, it's called test sequence. This test sequence only has sequence data in it. It doesn't have files in it. So therefore, when you want to transfer a sequence, you need to grab all of the um, sequence files that are attached to that sequence in order to recreate it on your other computer. So the again, the goal here is we want to take from our computer and we want to uh, move from our computer to let's say a laptop and sequence the same sequence on a laptop and that's what we're going to do the next thing we're going to talk about is how do we transfer all these files uh, well we, the options for manually transferring files manually copying all related files for that specific sequence you need to have the RGBFX file which we said is your is your layout you have to have your network file which is your controller tab you have to have your uh, any shaders, any XSQ files, your sequence file, the MP3 file, all image files if you use them, all shader files if you've used those, and all video files if you've used them. Now, that's manually doing it. You physically have to go pick out ev each and every single one. But I think the easiest way to get your sequence that you're working off of out of your, um, physically out of your, uh, 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 XLite's computer and transfer it, we use the package sequence function. Now, package sequence came along back in 2016. It was a easy way to gather up images uh, that were associated with your sequence, and it also recorded um, the, the specific uh, sh file structure of the computer and where those should be located. And it made a nice, neat package and it put everything into a zip folder so to create a package sequence the first thing that I would do is I would have my sequence X lights open and I would have the sequence open um, I really don't know if it's necessary to render or not but I always render first and then I click tools and package sequence it's that simple so what this does is this X lights will now go through it will zip up a folder and it will add to that folder your RGBFX file for you, your network file, your sequence.xsq, uh, it will add the MP3 for you. Uh, there's a setting that shuts that off for folks like me who don't, or who are unable, we're not able to share MP3s, but uh, you're able to take that along and it packages up with it. And it also packages all images, videos, and shader files, any, uh, and also other files too that are a little bit older that maybe not as common or aware. Uh, ISEQ files, I think that was one of the older files, but uh, for the most part, these are the files that you would expect to have, and XLights will do it naturally for you. Now, this allows you to recreate the sequence on another machine as if you're working on it on the original machine and it's a really really nice feature so transferring the sequences well now that you have this package sequence you can see here we're in our x -Lite show folder here we have our package sequence after we went through uh, tools package sequence now we can go ahead and save this folder this zip folder onto a second computer and we do that by using a thumb drive so basically shove the thumb drive in the USB port and transfer the the uh, package sequence over onto that now you go ahead and open up over on your other computer uh, the the uh, thumb drive and you drag out the uh, package sequence onto uh, a, a show or a, a folder location on that computer. So the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to extract the zip file or in other words you're going to need to unpackage it. So you packaged it up now we're unpackaging it on the computer that you're going to take with you uh, and go enjoy. What we'll do is we'll unpack it by clicking physically clicking on the file and when you do if you're in Windows you'll have this tab up here that says compressed folders tools you can click on this tab and then over here is this button that says extract all you can then right uh, you can right click and extract as well but I always like to use this this image here as a way to uh, easily extract it um, and the Windows does all the work whenever you click extract or whenever you extract all this next box will come up that says extract compressed zip folders select a destination and extract the files so basically what I've done here is I'm just putting this into a new folder uh, somewhere else on my new computer or my other my sequence computer for my laptop or whatever 
and um, it's going to extract it and it's going to call it the same name of the sequence. It's going to create a folder. And then, so this is what happens after you finish that process. It creates a folder in the exact place that you tell it to. And you'll notice that it's the exact same name of the sequence that you packaged up. What we need to do now is we need to make sure that this second computer has X lights on it. You want to make sure that the X lights is the same version uh, or a newer version uh, that, you're, uh, that you were using initially on the other computer. You want to make sure you download X lights and put it on there and install it. And then you want to open it up and then click on the change permanently button on the controller tab. And what this does is this allows you to uh, open up and select the show directory that you're going to be working in. So what we'll do now is we'll navigate to the newly created folder with your sequences name and then click on the select folder button. So that's this select show directory select button. Then after you have navigated X lights on your laptop to this new directory, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to open your sequence by clicking the file open button or file and open sequence button. And then you're going to render your sequence. If you just click play and you click on any of the, um, uh, any of the f uh, images, videos, or shader effects, then what X lights will do is it will display something in red. This red designates that X lights can't find the path. So rendering the sequence before you play it will fix those file structure or broken paths uh, for, and for the video, the images, and the shaders. It will fix it so that it recognizes this new computer file structure and it should play as normal. And this is after unpacking the sequence. So there are a couple pros and cons to packaging sequences and using this kind of a transfer. Well, the pros are you can uh, process the process is easy. Like anybody could do this. It takes a second to create a package sequence. Any computer user's skill level, it, it, they can figure this out. This is the easy part. Um, all files are usually are, are very neatly packed. You can pick up exactly where you left off. Uh, I'm sure there's a, this isn't obviously an exhaustive list, but there's a number of there's a number of pros to being able to easily extract your sequence from one computer and place it on another. However, there are there is a downside to doing this, and this is one of the most frustrating reasons uh, of of sequencing on multiple computers, which we're going to address here in a little bit. Um, some of the cons are uh, you created an alternate version uh, different from the original that's on your other computer and now you have to package on the new computer and transfer the sequence back and place it onto the old computer. Now you have to go in and import the original the the package sequence into your original sequence or you just abandon your original sequence and now you have to create a new sequence and import from the zip folder now is that hard no that's not hard it's just a bunch of extra steps however if if you're if you're a computer challenged person this can be confusing because you're doing a lot of dancing with files if you're not a file uh, logic file based person and if you have challenges with, uh, with, with trying to keep your files organized in your computers uh, believe me we've seen all types of people and it's it, some people just are it's a little harder for some people to navigate this this can be one of the the challenges for uh, using this file transfer method but the method does work you just have to take your time with it um, it is the simplest way to transfer all files in one neat package, and you'll just have to work to put the sequence back into your main computer. That's really the, um, the biggest challenge whenever it comes to transferring these files. So with that, this is the end of part one. Um, if anybody has any questions, by all means, go ahead and unmute your microphone, and I'm happy to talk about these uh, right now if you're ready.